The guard link on machine interface can bring safety inputs and diagnostic information into a guard logics. 5380 or 5580 safety programmable controller. Today's video is an application demonstration of a safety control system that uses the 432 ESIG3 guard link interface to monitor emergency stops, locking guard doors, and non locking guard doors. The application demonstration will be from the HMI as seen by the operator. For details on the GuardLogix programming, reference the 432 ESIG3 GuardLogix programming video. The safety control system in this demonstration has three types of safety functions. Emergency stop, guard door open or unlocked, and guard door open. Safety contactors are used to control power for all safety functions. Since there are multiple safety input devices, the calculated safety reliability of each guard door safety function is slightly different. The safety functions are SIL2 or Category 3 PLD capable, limited by the SIL2 Category 3 PLD guard logics controller. Starting from the HMI topology view, the guard link channels have been arranged by device type. E stops on channel 0, locking guard doors on channel 1 and non-locking guard doors on channel 2. Coordinating device type to guard link channel provides guard logics the ability to react differently to each device type. In this application, all devices result in removal of power, so separating the topology was not required. The topology view shows the safety status and standard node feedback for each device. When an e-stop is pressed, the safety rated channel zero status is tripped and the standard data indicates which e-stop has been tripped. The node faceplate can be used to get detailed information from the guard link node. Pulling out the e-stop push button shows the node input data A and data B turning on and the node returning to the run ready state. The HMI faceplates shown in this demonstration are pre-released. Actual released versions may be different. While reviewing e-stops, observe what happens when one wire falls off of the dual channel e-stop push button. Removing one wire from the e-stop push button causes the safety status of the channel zero to trip. A good programmer manually programs all alarms when a safety device is not ready. Click on the bell icon to see the node specific alarm. The GuardLink interface also makes use of a system level feature called Automatic Diagnostics. With zero programming, the GuardLink nodes produce device level diagnostics to factory talk alarm and events capable HMI products. View Designer automatically creates an automatic diagnostic screen. Click on the heart icon. The device name is showing a discrepancy fault. The GuardLink interface user manual has a list of all automatic diagnostic reported fault codes. Returning to the GuardLink topology view, the faceplate displays the discrepancy fault, the loss of data channel A, and displays the increment to the diagnostic count for the node. To recover from the fault, the wire is replaced, shown by data A coming back on, Following the prompt, the device is cycled by pushing the e-stop push button in and out. The node is now run ready. All guard doors can be locked or unlocked from the HMI using standard logic. Demonstrated by pressing the unlock and lock all push buttons. Opening the channel 1 node 1 faceplate, individual guard doors can be unlocked and locked. If a guard door is unlocked and then open and a lock command is given, the door indicates open until it's closed. After being closed, the guard door indicates locked. Non-locking guard doors have similar capability as a locking guard door but without the lock and unlock feature. Here we will demonstrate the device reset function. The node device must be tripped for a reset. Pressing the reset push button power cycles the device. Notice that all devices on the GuardLink channel go to a faulted state during a power cycle. 
Unplugging the channel 1 trunk cable, the GuardLink interface detects a broken GuardLink trunk. The automatic diagnostic features indicate that Node 3 and Node 4 lost connection. With no programming, the user can pinpoint the broken trunk to between Node 2, which is still connected, and Node 3, which has lost connection. After repairing the cable, the automatic diagnostic active display clears. Past events can be viewed on the automatic diagnostic history screen. The guard link channel details are also viewable from the HMI. Details such as channel status, device count, last trip location, and time are very valuable for system troubleshooting. The safety main page provides a machine level view. The machine has been divided into Zone 1 with locking guard doors and Zone 2 with non-locking guard doors. For simplicity, a single turntable has power removed with a pair of safety contactors. Each safety device has been placed on the machine view to provide a location reference for operators. During a machine startup, the operator can easily determine which safety devices are tripped. In this case, pull out the e-stop near zone 2. Close the locking guard door on the back of the machine. Indicators show e-stop and guard doors are now run ready. Pressing and releasing the reset push button enables the safety run permissive, which energizes the safety contactors. Press the start button to start the machine. With the machine running, an open guard door event is indicated visually by a red indicator for zone 2 guard doors. At the node level, the door indicates open. And on the alarm summary, indicates device not run ready. Close the guard door, reset, and start. With the machine running, a safety input has a wire fall off. The fault is clearly indicated at the e-stop node and in the alarm summary. If the programmer neglected to provide this level of HMI programming, automatic diagnostics still reports the guard link node that has a discrepancy fault. To fix the discrepancy fault, replace the wire on channel B, cycle the emergency stop push button, the device becomes run ready. Press the machine reset and start, the machine returns to operation. For this demonstration, the GuardLink interface module was used to provide detailed operation and troubleshooting information to the HMI. Even if programmers fail to provide detailed troubleshooting information, automatic diagnostics provides node level fault information for tr the troubleshooter. Thanks for watching, and hey, let's be careful out there.